I had been married to David for almost six months when I noticed the strange occurrences in his house. You know, creaking in the hallway, scratching in the walls, all the usual creepy things you'd expect from a horror movie. Despite all these things, however, David never seemed to be bothered by them. Nor would he ever wish to speak about them with me. Much to my chagrin. So one night, I had decided to wake David up in the middle of the night, so he too could hear the sounds for once rather than sleeping through them. I laid in bed for, I don't know, maybe an hour after David fell asleep and then the noise started. Scratch. Scratch. I heard from the wall behind the headboard. David! I hissed. Wake up! I frantically shook him until his eyes finally opened. What? He asked in the groggiest voice imaginable. Just as David spoke aloud, the sound stopped. And I briefly heard a frustrated hiss from above me in the attic. What is it? Asked David as he buried his face into the pillow. Listen, shaking in fear as goosebumps ran up and down my arms, legs, and torso. However, by then the noise had come to a complete halt. I don't hear anything, murmured David. Just get back to sleep. I've got work at six, he grumbled before he quickly nodded off back to sleep, although I couldn't. Not after that sharp hiss of frustration I heard from the attic. I continued to lie in the darkness as I waited for another sound to resonate from the walls or the ceiling. I was just praying it would, wouldn't come from outside our bedroom door. Eventually, just as the sun began to rise outside our bedroom window, I managed to drift off back to sleep. When I eventually awoke at one in the afternoon, I heard David downstairs in the kitchen likely cooking breakfast as he usually did, but as I got out of bed to go and greet him, something odd came to mind. It was 1 p.m. David started work. 6 a.m. I don't know why, but my heart practically stopped in my chest. It wouldn't have been logical to assume David had gotten home early and decided to make dinner or that work canceled on him or, or that he had gotten the day off. But instead of thinking rational thoughts, my, my brain was racked with the thoughts of the previous night. Of something listening to us in the walls and ceiling. Of the possibility of someone living in our house without our knowledge, I... I don't know how long I stood frozen in my bedroom with the door shut before I eventually heard the sounds from downstairs cease. I slowly crept over to my phone and put it on silent before ringing David. He didn't pick up, however. He could have been busy making food or maybe he was in a meeting and had turned his phone off. Either way... I was not going to be getting any confirmation of David's whereabouts. When I decided to combat the horrific feeling in my stomach, and I stepped out of the bedroom and onto the land with just a short corridor leading to the stairs going down into the living room and kitchen, with a few deep breaths and shaking like an autumn leaf on its last day, I slowly forced my legs to carry me down the stairs. I stared down the stairs into the brightly lit living room, but the kitchen was still out of my line of sight. I slowly crept down the stairs as I heard a strange sound. Humming. An almost feminine humming. But, but, but it was so wrong, so, so, uh, so inhuman. I crept around the corner at the bottom of the stairs and looked into the brightly lit kitchen to see. Myself. It, it was just standing there in my pajamas making food or so it appeared from the awkward side angle I had on myself, but it, its its face was anything but my own. It, it had similar features, but it was soaked in black bile and everything about the face was so odd and disproportioned. Before it could spot me, I held my breath and retreated back upstairs, only to end up on the damn creaking floorboard. 
The humming stopped and my heart began racing. I dropped the stealthy act and sprinted up to my bedroom where I locked the door and called 911. Lydia? An eerie and distorted version of my own voice called through the window door. Come out. Its sing-songy tone only made me more frenetic as I finally patched through to an operator and I just immediately began screaming for the police. They reassured me everything would be okay just as the thing started banging on the door. I waited for what felt like forever, listening to that horrific variant of myself singing to me to come out of the, out of the room. Every time it would try to turn the door handle, my heart would skip a beat and somehow even more goosebumps would layer over my skin. It took almost an hour before the police finally showed up. The thing stopped making noise as it disappeared into the house. This is the police! I faintly heard downstairs, but I downright refused to exit my bedroom. I instead sat, just curled in a ball. My arms wrapped around my legs, I waited and heard the door downstairs smash open as two or three police officers ran around the downstairs before they came up and knocked on my door. Ma'am? The voice asked. I got up and timidly unlocked the door before peeking out. Thankfully, the officer looked and sounded perfectly normal. You have to help me, was all I could mutter out as my vision frantically darted all over the corridor leading to the attic doorway. What is it? asked the officer. Ma'am? It, it, looked, it looked like me, I mumbled. Tears mostly streaming down my face from the fear. The officer didn't say anything as his eyes followed the direction mine were pointing directly at the attic. The officer called downstairs for the other officers and investigated the attic, but found nothing. They then did a very thorough search of the entire house and found nothing. Despite my protests, the officers left as soon as my husband returned home. I even heard one of them tell me to get me checked out at a hospital. After the police departed, I immediately questioned David on what I saw, but he claimed that he had never seen anything like that and instead claimed I had been watching too many scary movies and haven't been acting myself lately. <sighs> it, it didn't take long for David to force me to visit a psychologist, just, just in case I did imagine it. They tried to prescribe me antipsychotics of all things, even though I know what I saw was real. I haven't heard... I haven't heard anything in the walls since my last doctor's visit, but, but now instead of hearing things, I'm feeling them. Like a thousand pairs of eyes, always watching me at the darkest hours of the night.